Chaos coaching. No whistle. No hat. All lasers. Oh! My offensive and defensive ebooks are now available over on HotRod.Tips. If you guys are looking to win more games than Madden 20, that's the place to be. And don't forget, use code CHAOS for 10% off at checkout. What's good, everybody? We're back with another Chaos Coaching video. I'm not going to waste any of your time today. If you've seen these before, you already know. It's me walking through my adjustments. Why I call what I call, what I see on the field, just helping you all improve in Madden. That all starts with the lineup. Looking over the lineup, you probably see not much has changed. Michael Vick is still at the helm. I did almost use Carson Wentz. He is very, very effective. Probably my second favorite QB that I've used all year. You have Marcus Allen, Brian Westbrook. Receiving core, not bad. Going over the quickly to the abilities, Randy Moss and Calvin have the same thing. Route Tenition, Slot Apprentice, Treak Specialist. Very, very effective combo when you mix Route Tenition with Slot Apprentice. You're going to pretty much burn anyone in man-to-man. -man. And of course, Michael Vick, Gutsy Scrambler, Roaming Deadeye, and Escape Bars. If you're not playing with Escape Bars QB, it's tough out there to pass the ball. O-line's not bad. Going to the defensive side, I have... Basically, I want to stack my safeties. That's the most important position with me. They play linebacker, they play safety. I'll even sometimes put them at corner if I'm in like 3-4 and I think I'm just going to try to stop the run. I don't want like Deion Sanders out there because he can't really block shed, stuff like that. Linebacking core, also not bad. Lawrence Taylor and Khalil Mack are my two pass rushers along with Julius Peppers, of course. Going over to the abilities here, got to have Julius Peppers with inside stuff and pass rush elite. Lawrence Taylor, pass rush elite with secure tackler and unfakeable, essentially acting as a pass rusher, but then also my run stopper when I go to 3-4. Taylor Mays, basically my coverage guy with Lurker, where I'm going to be using him. And if he's not user, I click on to him, he'll make plays. And then he has Enforcer, of course, as well. So definitely effective combo that we have across the board with our abilities. Oh, let me show you guys my backup corners. Uh, so I have Dion and Nandi Asma. I just want you guys to see the whole lineup. You guys need to see where you should be putting your players. And then we go in more in depth with our kind of our formation subs throughout the game. But Dolphins offense, Dolphins defense. You guys know where to get them. HotRot.Tips. I've already updated them, I believe, twice each. So very fun things going on over there. That's it for me. Let's get into the game. All right. I am ready to get after it. I'm going to start my pregame spiel that I do for every Chaos Coaching video. First, look at your opponent's top three. See what they might like to do. If they have receivers out there, they might want to pass. If they have a couple running backs, especially if they have two running backs, they probably want to run. Going into the kickoff, making sure on your main menu, if you guys go into the settings, setting your options first option, if you win the toss to set the kickoff, of course, second option against the wind. That way, if you're in the second quarter in the fourth quarter, end of half situation, you have the win on your side. Or if they need to kick, they have the win against them. So either war, it can it can easily benefit you. So those are your two options. Always do that. And then going into your formation subs, of course, you need to put your guys in positions to be successful. So I have inside stuff on Julius Peppers. I'm going to put him at DT. Move Fletcher Cox out to the outside. Of course, it doesn't really make too much sense in football terms to put your DT at end and put your end at DT. But in Madden terms, because of abilities, that's how it works. Now, Lawrence Taylor, if I think they're going to run, I want him at middle linebacker, and I'll move Bobby Wagner to the outside. However, if I think they're going to pass out of the... Th and I'm back in 3-4, and they're in like an I-form type, I'll move Lawrence Taylor back to the outside linebacker so that he can pass rush. Again, just putting your players in positions to be successful. Then going and going into Big Dime, I'm pausing the game here just for an extra 15 seconds. If you guys didn't know that, you can get you an extra 15 seconds. I'm just going to go finish my spiel off here. But... Putting your slot corners, making sure they're in the right spots. Your fastest guys, so when the, if they're blitzing or manning up, they can be effective. Making sure you, if you're in a pass defense formation like 146, putting your safeties at linebacker, uh, putting putting uh, your fast safeties at linebacker, excuse me, but your outside rushing linebackers, pass rushing. So that's what you want to do, guys. And then now we're in the early game, right? So basically early on in the game, I like to figure out what does my opponent like to do? And he could, he could like to pass. He could like to run. He's coming out in the gun formation. So that's already a benefit to him in that he's probably gonna be one of the pass the ball at least excuse me a benefit to me we're hollering we're humming at him that's perfect we're trying to feel out what he wants to do if he's gonna come out in a gun formation he's probably gonna want to pass because this year you already know if you're playing against a runner they're going eye form they're going eye tight they're going strong close they're going eye close that's what they're doing but he's probably gonna be a passer and i like that i like playing against passers it's more fun than playing against a runner i feel like you have to think a little bit more personally uh on the defensive side of the ball if you're, if you're playing against a runner, you're probably just trying to find the best run defense possible. Now, I'm just trying to pick up on his route combos. What is he going to want to do on a long down? So, he's on a second and 18. Maybe we can figure out what he wants to do later on a long down. Oh, I got stuck. That's not what you want to do. He throws an out route. Good catch by Andre Reed. But this is just what I'm learning. So, on a, on a long down, he thinks I'm going to cover three. He put an out route out there. That means he's going to want to put an out route later. Maybe I'll be in a cover two that time and I can take that away. Just continuing to try to pick up on what he wants to do. I'm actually going to go to that cover two right now. And... Now, now we get his third down play, right? So on a third and short, what does he like to go to? 
We'll figure that out for later. If you can remember these things, put them in your mental notes. Later on in the game, in the fourth quarter, when he goes to a third and three or a third and four, you probably know his call. So that's important things that you just need to note. And we're humming, baby. Perfect start. So it's fourth and 12, and he's actually going to bring out the leg. He's going to punt the ball. All that really tells me is he's more of a conservative Madden player. So if I put him in a down where he feels uncomfortable picking it up, he's probably going to punt the ball or kick his three. And that doesn't really help you in that in like strategy, but it helps you in how you how you can kind of guess what he's going to do on a given down. Because if you play someone uh, that you know is going to go for on a third down, you know that they have the fourth down to go for it too, right? So if it's a third and 10, they might only need five yards. But if he's on a third and 10, he probably wants to get all 10 back because he's going to probably end up punting the ball, right? Now, early on in the game, I like to just start off with a quick little run. I, I run out of shotgun just to see if they have run defense, see if they flip. He flipped with me. I'm actually going to hike it before he can get over there. And I lost yards there. That was a good job by him. That's something I noted right away. If someone flips with me, puts their slot corner on my strong side run, if they're willing to flip, that usually means they know what they're doing, right? Because usually people will just not flip with me. I'll have I'll be able to run against the weak side without the slot corner. So definitely noted that right there. Good play by him. Now I'm, now I'm just going to go to my PAY shot. Go to my best play early. See if he has any defense for it. And we can kind of get into the, into the meat of this game. And he played, he played pretty good defense right there. Good user. Took away my slant. I probably could have still lowballed it, but I was slow on my read. And now I'm in a third and 12. Obviously, I don't want to be in this third and 12. I'm feeling out his defensive side of the ball. Same thing as offense. We felt out what he wanted to do passing the ball wise. Look, there he's probably pausing the game here to get his extra 15 seconds. I just told you guys about that. But essentially what he's doing, what I'm doing is trying to figure out what he wants to do on the defensive side of the ball. What coverage is he playing? Does he blitz? Does he play coverage, etc. So essentially we're in the kind of the situation I just talked about. I know I'm going to go for it on fourth and 12 if I don't pick up any yards here. So honestly, I'm I'm kind of telling you guys, if I, I don't need all 12, I know I'm going to go for it. Whereas I told you with him, he probably needs them all because he doesn't want to go for it on a fourth down. I want to go for it. So I didn't need every yard back there. I didn't go for all of it. I just needed half it back. Now we're in a half back situation. I'm actually going to go to my play where I feel like I have a short yardage read as well as a deep read because you never know if they're going to get super aggressive, play hard flats. So you need something to take advantage if they play full short, but you also need something to to actually get you those two yards if you need it see what he's using in there he uses the running back we should have our post dead eye let's go baby roaming dead eye it had been a minute since i got a roaming dead eye for you guys and i know it had been a minute i got a lot of overthrows on this thing lately because this is not as good as dashing dead eye anymore they definitely i definitely feel like they nerfed it but always nice to get that we should have our slant here and there we go wow i'm gonna be completely honest with you completely 1000% honest that is the first time I've ever seen a yellow play my low ball slant now that could be on me if you go back and look at it I'll actually put it on the replay here I slid in the pocket right some that adds like a three maybe three extra yards of passing window so it gives him more time to jump it that's probably my fault if I stand tall in the pocket right there that low ball is probably easy money I can't be mad at anybody but myself right there However, I learned something. I always leave my mistakes in these videos, guys. I don't mind making mistakes for you. That's how you learn. Hey, I learned too. I literally just learned just there. I need to make sure I'm not moving in the pocket too far away from that slant, making it too tough of a pass. Should have him here. Right back. Ah, knock that out. Pick it, pick it, pick it. Oh, see there. See, probably kind of the same scenario. He rolled in the pocket to the right. Had to throw all the way across his body. It gives the defense so much more time to react. When you have that much time, it, it's too much ground to cover. So that's just a, where it usually beats a zone. It doesn't beat it right there simply because the quarterback moves too far, makes it too tough of a pass. Oh, no huddle here. I'm actually going to send a ton of pressure. Third and 11. Again, I don't think he's going to go for it on a fourth down just from what I learned before. So I don't mind giving him half back here. I wanted to get him in a situation where he can't pick it up. Don't get home. Come on. In the out routes. I told you guys before. He hit me with an out route. When I put, when I put deep thirds out there, I should have been expecting the game. Honestly, I expected to get home with pressure. I need to get a better touch up with my user. So that's on me. That's something I, I am really, really big on. If you're sending pressure, don't just send seven people. If you want to send four or five, fine, whatever. That's cool. But if you're sending seven, get down here with your user and touch up this line. Make sure you get home. And that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm sending seven again. Hopefully he max pros just like he did before. I'm taking away anything short after I bounce back here with my touch up. So I definitely messed up on a big third down, gave up the first down. Not the end of the world here. You guys will see me make up for it. And there we go. I get a touch up. And now we have guys coming in free. Now he got out to the right, but you saw there. You definitely saw we had probably two or three people coming in a lot more free than we did before. If we had that same exact scenario before, we probably 
would have gotten on the field on the fourth down. But that's on me. He's getting in the goal line here, which kind of just tells me he doesn't like to pass the ball down here in the red zone. He really just wants to run the ball. If we can lock up this goal line, we should be in decent shape. Oh! Oh my, we, we love to talk about Ken's stick skills over here, or at least the lack thereof. That was really, really bad. I should have smacked him right in the backfield. Easy money hit stick with Taylor Mays. I tried to click off, tried to get cute with it, see if it would guide me into the hit stick. I missed by a mile. Not, not a great sequence of events right there by me. I throw a bad pick because I'm rolling in the pocket to, or sl sliding in the pocket to the wrong side. I give up a third and 12, not getting a good touch up with my blitz, which is something I talk about day in and day out on these types of videos. So not, not the start we wanted, not the start we wanted, but again, you guys learn from my mistakes, man. You guys really do. I, I learn from them. So if I'm learning from them, you guys are probably learning too. Just picking up on these things. We're only down 7-0. We, we get ball at half. We put together a drive. We're still in really, really good shape. Now I'm setting up a coverage beater right here. He hasn't shown pressure only but one time. So essentially what we can do right here is set up any play with knowing we're going to have time in the pocket. And we're going to pick either post right now. It, it, knowing what your opponent's going to do, if he's going to send pressure or not, is so important because it shows you what plays you have to put on the field. And right there, perfect play. We get a nice catch from our receiver. It was a little bit of a tighter window than I would have liked. However, I had all time. I had all the time in the world only because I know he's only going to send three people. Remembering those things, putting them in your mental notes is so important. If he's going to send seven people and I'm going to send out four routes with two of them being late developing, I'm going to be really, really struggling to get those passes off. So it's really important to remember what your opponent's doing. This time we're going to try to get outside the pocket. I'm going to pretty much make him choose between corner route and in route. Uh, whichever one he doesn't use is what I'm going to try to throw. We got the double team out here. We should have the corner route. Feet down. Nice, nice, nice. Vic's throwing the ball well accurately right now. So we're, be we're being able to throw the ball on the run, which I always love to do. It's always a bonus. We're moving the ball well. Other than my one pick, the one battery that I had, I felt decent on offense pretty much throughout this entire game. I believe he's in the cover three here. We should have this deep post going across the middle of the field if he is. And it looks like he's not. So we're actually just going to throw the ball away here. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with throwing the ball away. I always like to leave those in too for the chaos coaching. If that's not a chaos coaching video, I'm probably just editing that thing out. Go to second and 10. But for these videos, I'd like to show you that's not a bad play. There is nothing wrong with throwing the ball away and moving on to the next play. Nothing wrong with that. It's better than taking a sack. It's definitely better than throwing a pick. Just got to trust me. That's something you have to do. Take my hitch right here. Get half these back. Good catch by Moss. Now we're on a third and four. Very, very manageable. If I had taken a sack on that down when I threw the ball away, we would not be in a manageable position, manageable position right now. We'd probably be taking three. However, we're in a third and four, which is extremely manageable. We're going to get our low pass. Nice catch by Brian Westbrook. Something he does really well is catch the football out of the backfield. You Eagles fans out there, I know he used to do this for you for many, many years. So we paid him the first down again because I was able to throw the ball away, keep myself in a manageable position. Now we're in the red zone. This is where it gets a little tight. Things are really, really tough down here to score, essentially just because, really just only because of one reason. The end zone keeps those defenders from getting pushed back and they pre it pretty much adds another defender to you. The back of the end zone keeps you from being able to beat those guys deep so they can play a lot more with their deep blues. Now we're just going to pick either wheel here. We're going to go back to Westbrook. Westbrook once again making plays. We're inside the five. Now we're on aggressive. When you're down here, here's my advice to you. Run the football. It is Madden 20. Running the football is what is best. Now, not everyone's run's going to work, but... You're going to you're going to have your best luck running the football. It's tough to pass the ball in this game no matter where you are on the field. When you get inside the 5, it gets really really dicey. So honestly, just run the football down here, try to punch it in. Have some dots lined up for when you get to a third and goal where you have to pass, but just try running the ball first. Make him stop you. If he can't stop you, then well, if he can't stop you, then just keep running the ball, but if he can't stop you, then go to your pass. So we're going to run the ball one more time here, see what he's got for me. Fight, Marcus. Go on aggressive. Let your player fight for you. Punch that thing in the end zone. That is the best way to be successful in this game. Now, I forgot to go off aggressive. Hopefully, Chaos, Coach Chaos can remember when I get back on offense to go back to conservative. But just trust me, when you're down here, run the ball. Make him stop you. If he stops one run, go to a different run. Madden 20 is filled with runs that you can use. I'm sure you all already know this. Every opponent you play against, if you stop their eye tight, they're going to eye close. If you stop their eye close, they're going to strong close. They will run the football. They'll go to goal line. As you saw earlier, the guy ran the goal line. He got a 25-yard run. So just pick a run, figure it out, 
have some success. Again, on the defensive side of the ball, all I'm doing is mixing up my coverages. Cover two, cover three, send in four, send in seven, trying to do different things, give him different looks, and just keep him uncomfortable while always noting what he likes to go to. One of the big things I've already noted is the out routes against the cover three. I'm actually going to sprint left here in case he gets outside that pocket. Ooh, he's not on an out route. We're on this. Smack him, Tillman. Smack him, Tillman. Fumble that ball. Pick it up. Pick it up. Oh, if he takes that hit, he has to pay for it. Oh, wow. That's brutal. That is brutal. If, you're, if your opponent takes a hit with their QB, they got it. They got a fumble and you got to get it. I'm actually going to bait him here into throwing me an out route. I'm going to I'm gonna lurk down here as if I'm sending seven. I'm literally just going to sprint to the right and try to get this out route. I'm, ha I'm going to have a spy keep him from running because he's actually hurt me a little bit with his legs. But I'm hovering down here like I'm sending seven. The exact same look. I'm only going to send four. I'm sprinting off to the right. There's my out route. I'm on it. He had the out route out there. Nothing's open. Pick that. Let's go. Come on to the crib, to the crib, to the crib. Come on. I love when I'm teaching you guys about something. I'm giving you guys some advice and it works out perfectly. I was, I called the out route. I sent seven. I called out the max pro. He max pro. I only sent four with a spy, keeping him in the pocket. I lurked the out route, which I pretty much knew was coming from my mental notes. I remembered that. Took it away. He had nothing open. He forces a pass to the left side where I had a flat to take away the out route. Pick six. I love when it works out that way. It doesn't always work out that way. If this is your first Chaos Coaching video, you best know. I don't know. It doesn't always come off that well. I'll usually say, all right, here's the out route. Here's the out route. And he'll hit me with an in route and throw a laser. But it worked out perfectly there. I either You either learn from my mistakes or you learn from what I do well. So that time is something that actually worked out for me. We're actually in an end of half situation now. So what I want to do is I only just want to send four. I don't need to do anything crazy. I don't want to give up any big bombs. It's our ball at halftime, which means if I get the ball up seven, one, one touchdown or field goal pretty much put, puts me in position to win the game. So I just don't want to give up a touchdown right here. I don't want to give a big play. If I end up giving it a field goal, it's not what I want to do. Ooh, we humming. I don't want to give up any points, but it's definitely better than giving up like a 70 yard touchdown that I could have prevented by just not sending seven or eight people at him. No, don't quit. Don't quit on me. All right, I'm glad you didn't quit. I am glad you didn't quit because I want to I want to be able to break this thing down for you. I want to show you guys all the different scenarios. So this is the end of half scenario where essentially you just don't want, you don't give up points. Uh, sorry, don't give up a touchdown. If you give up a field goal, obviously that stinks, especially in a game where you might lose if you give up a field goal against a top, like a top superior player. And that was really bad. Oh, that was really bad. I got, I bumped into my player. I'll show it. I, I can't show it to you because he went no huddle, but I wanted to show you where I bumped him. That was just really bad user. Just, just really bad. Just a really bad play essentially. But fact of the matter is, look, this is the point. Obviously, if you're playing a superior player, or a person that you really think can like best you in a game, you don't want to give up any type of points here. But in a game where I actually feel comfortable moving the ball on offense, I felt like I made one small mistake. And then defensively, I feel like I played well, and I feel like I know what he wants to do. I don't want to give up any points right here. So I actually am going to send pressure, but I'm sending it with deep, three deep thirds across the field. There's no way I'm going to let myself get beat deep. I'm playing sticks. If you play sticks with deep thirds, they don't get beat deep. They don't press or anything. They just run straight back. And I have 99 speed guys. We got some pressure in there. We got a nice touch up. Nothing doing that. Pretty much that, that takes the field goal off the board. Unless I just mess up and give up a crazy big play again. So I'm going to go back to my conservative style, which I was talking about before. And just making sure I don't give up anything deep. We're sending four people. Manning the guy up. You know what I'm saying? Like Just mixing it up is, is good in one thing. But essentially, not giving up this bomb right here before half is even better than not mixing it up. So I'm not giving the same look at the send seven. But essentially, I... <laughs> It doesn't matter if he knows I'm sending four. Oh, wow. I'm I'm acting like I'm so much smarter than everybody else. I mean, Mr. Coach Chaos, such a smart guy. All I'm saying, all I'm trying to say there is sending four people. Doesn't matter if I'm giving the same look as send seven. I don't mind if he knows I'm only sending four people. I just want to make sure I take away the stuff that's going to give him a field goal or give him a deep touchdown. And of course, I'm just rattling off things as if they matter and I give up a field goal. But I did say, I did say, I don't really mind giving him a field goal. I just want to give up the big play right there just because I feel comfortable moving the ball. If I go get seven right here, I'm up 11 points. Game's in a really, really nice position for myself. If I do happen to only get three, I'm only up seven. But either way, I'm in complete control of the game. Now, I didn't have the best kickoff to open the half off. We're at the 14. But that means I'm just going to try to get out the side of the pocket here, which that way I don't take a sack. I can just throw the ball away if need be. Or I can take my corner route on my in route. I just want to be safe to make sure. I, you don't want to take a sack when you're already this close. And we should have our corner route. 
Not the best pass lead, but we're able to fit it. Nice little swerve action just to get myself a nice angle to catch the ball. Gave ourselves some space. Now we can kind of settle in and start dissecting his defense. What I've noticed from him is he seems to be going a deep third on the right with no flat and then a cover two on the back side. So the ISO receiver side has a cover two shell. The right side has a cover three with no flat. So we should have this easy flat route to the sideline. We'll see. And damn, exactly what I said. And we got some yards. And we got some yards off the swerve. There we... That's exact... Guys, I'm telling you. Literally, just dissecting what they're doing, remembering it, going back to it. I've seen he had a cover three shell on the two wide receiver side and then a cover two shell on the one wide receiver side. I saw that and it was just easy money in the bank. I can throw that flat route all day against cover three, especially if not going to put a flat out there. And I, I did not know we were going to get 40 yards, but I gave myself a chance to give us get some rack and at least get six or seven. And we were able to turn it into more because Calvin Johnson has 99 speed. And I got a lucky swerve because you know I have no stick. Right there, he actually did a really good job of shooting that gap. But we were able to swerve him a little bit, get a few yards. Just want to keep this thing trucking. It gets a little bit tight down here in the red zone. I've already went over that. So I try to mix in a little bit more runs. When I'm in the other side of the field, I don't run much. Unless I see like a one four six or like a quarters, that I can just tote all over. I'll usually, I'll usually not run the ball until I'm near the red zone. I know 20 is technically the red zone, but it gets a little bit tight around the 30. So you can call less plays. You got to start mixing in more runs. Keep them guessing. Go back to a pass here, though. Second and seven. I don't want to take a sack right here. A sack pretty much ends my drive. But if we can pick up a couple, that'd be nice. First down's even better. He should go to the running back wheel. He does. We should have our post. Dive catch. I get asked all the time, how do you create the dive catches? It's different on every pass, but on a post like that, it's not a low pass or anything. It's just a regular pass. Pass lead a little bit to the side and a little bit down. If you're on a clock, it's either, depending on which side you're throwing to, it's either going to be like 4 o'clock or around, uh, or around like 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. So... That's what I do to create the low pass on the post. It's different for every pass, though. Running back wheels, you got to low pass them sometimes. Just go into practice mode, play around with that pass lead. That pass lead is very, very effective, as you saw there. We're able to pick up a nice game without getting our guy hit and helping us to pick up an easy first down. And we got some space. And you, I, I will tell you guys exactly how I got that touchdown. Perfect, perfect drive out of half to go out 11. I saw him shoot the gap last time. He timed up my motion snap perfectly. He knew I was going to hike it right past the tackle. That time I waited just, just a tick, just a tick past the tackle. I watched him run up to where the gap would be. He had to stop. He couldn't get all the way through that gap because he didn't time it perfectly that time. We get an easy swerve left, easy touchdown. Perfect start to the half. I love our position now. Just going to sky kick this thing to the right. That's typically what I do unless they show. They'll pitch it back to their to their Deion Sanders or their Devin Hester with human joystick and try to make some plays. If they start doing that, I'll maybe just sky kick left, keep it away from their best player, but... I kick right, we'll usually do against most people. Just, just trying to give you guys a little helpful tips. From, from beginner tips to advanced tips, I feel like this can help a lot of different Madden players. So I try to break down as much as I can throughout a game. Now, this guy hasn't changed his formation up. He has not run the ball much, maybe only a few runs. I'm going to send some pressure here, try to make sure I take away that out route, which is actually giving me a little bit of trouble today. And if I can take away that out route, I should get home. And hopefully, he just can't get outside the pocket. If he gets outside the pocket, we'll change it up on the next play. But get this touch up. I'm telling you, if you're sending seven people, please get this touch up. I can't. I've already, I know I already talked about it. I know I already talked about it. I like to run these videos. I like to stress important things. When you're sending seven people, this touch up is important because you get home instantly. And you guys probably think, oh, you're just cheese blitzing, whatever, whatever. But honestly, if you want to win in this game, you have to do it. You literally do. You don't have to do it every play. If you do it every play, you'll get dotted up by a top player. I'm telling you right now, if you send seven people and don't do anything else ever, you will get dotted up. But it's just... It's, it's the way you have to play this year, especially when people want to run the ball every play against you. When they want to pass, you got to send some pressure, man. make it tough on them. So just continue in distress, get this touch up. But mixing in sending four is also important. So that's that's two things I think can really help you guys. We're humming at this guy right now. I'm actually going to play it safe here. I'm actually going to play it safe. No reason. There's no reason for me to send more than four people right now. If he picks half this back, he's still in a fourth and 15. And remember, early in the game, he punted. When he was just on a fourth and 12. So that makes me think that he's going to punt the ball in these types of situations. And we get a coverage sack. We get a safety. This game's really starting to go our way. And that can happen. In the, that can happen in a football game. It can, especially in Madden. Early on in the game, I got a stop. But then he got a, he got a pick and then he scored on me, right? So he got up 7 nothing. But as I learned what he was doing, as I picked up on his coverage shells, as I picked up on his tendencies, don't quit. I, I'm going to finish my spiel whether he quits or not. When he And then I picked up on, oh, he quit. Oh, man. Oh, I hate when people do that, especially in a good game. But I picked up on his defensive tendencies, how I could attack him. 
because with the shells and stuff, but on his offensive tendencies as well, as I picked up on that out route, whenever he, whenever I sent seven, he could tell I was sending seven, he put that out route. It got me a pick six. It basically won me that game. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I haven't been bringing as much of these because I'm knocking out these team teams. I hope you guys are enjoying those as well, but that's it for me. Oh, I love you guys, man. Take it easy. Peace. Finally, an adjustment worked for me. We got the pick six. Hit the like if you like that pick six.